Hello everybody, let's talk about focusing on work. And you know, you gotta work at home, you gotta work somewhere or somewhere in the world. I used to not have a home. I remember going to Manchester one time with heavy metal loud in my ears on a train with a deck of cards. And uh, around this time, Bulletproof Coffee was just coming out and uh, I remember going to a cafe and drinking this Bulletproof Coffee, listening to heavy metal as loud as I could, memorizing cards. And why, why do this? because I wanted to work on my focus and my concentration so that I could focus and concentrate no matter what. And the idea came that, you know, if I put on a lot of noise, especially heavy metal, it might help. And it's very challenging to sit there and focus on playing cards with all of this noise going on when, that you've deliberately induced, right? And it's a strategy. It's a strategy to help focus better even in tough times. And so Sean is here checking in from New Jersey. Connie above. Uh, yo, hello, Connie from Chicago. Wonderful to have you here. M. Yasin from Pakistan. Wow, Pakistan. Uh, do you say namaste also in Pakistan? M. Yasin Khan, let me know. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. David is here. Good to see you, David. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, yeah, the thing with the uh, deliberately adding noise is it certainly will help improve your focus and concentration if you have a targeted goal. So, you know, is doing that for reading books such a good thing? I don't know, but doing this, yeah, it's, it's very good if you have a targeted goal of memorizing more cards with distraction, because, you know, you go and sit in a memory competition, there's gonna be people moving around, cameras, etc. And that can be quite distracting. However, is the world a memory competition? I don't think so. And so noise canceling headphones, which we see pictured here, is something that a lot of people practice with for memory competitions. And you can do it both way, add noise or remove noise. But the world is not really a place where you're gonna get to use noise canceling headphones all the time. And some people are different. They they concentrate well with some sort of background noise and others need total silence. But you don't always get to have what you want, you know? Sometimes you <laughs> sometimes you get what you need, sometimes you get what you don't need, sometimes you get all these sorts of things. So there's never gonna be a perfect, there's never gonna be a, you know, situation that's ideal for what you want. And then you might all of a sudden have everything yanked out from underneath you and the whole world is all of a sudden upside down and you don't know what to do, but you still have to concentrate. You still have to show up. You still have to be able to focus. And that's the situation that we find ourselves in right now. And so I remember manufacturing chaos just to be able to focus better. And that is itself a strategy, but we could have better strategies. So we're going to talk about some of those strategies today. But the first thing that I would want to say is forgive yourself if you can't focus. Forgive yourself if you can't concentrate. You've got a human brain. That brain is guided, directed by all kinds of issues. And it is very survival focused. It's very short term in many ways in order to help take care of that body that it needs to uh, make sure is getting food and water and um, all kinds of other things. So you got to forgive yourself if you're not focused, if you're not concentrated. And then you got to decide and really, really commit to making a change so that you can focus. So we're going to get into this today with three categories that we can work on. And we're going to cover all three of these categories to make sure that you are sorted and settled and you can focus on work, whether you're at home or anywhere that you might be. And, you know, you could be a flight uh, attendant and you are trying to read a book in your break so that you could pass an exam to have a job that's different than the one that you have, or maybe whatever it is that you want to do as the architect of your future, you may have these things where you need to be able to focus no matter where you are in the world. And we're going to craft a strategy, a, a path, a plan for you, and look at it in three different ways. So Tim is here from Virginia. Hello, Tim. Good to see you. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, get subscribed. Enable those notifications so you see the new content we're putting out for you at a regular clip and um, hit that thumbs up so the robots know humans care about this content. So what are the three categories that we need to work on? Well, we got to work on our long-term lifestyle tactics for having focus on demand, right? If we just do this short-term, 
you know, we might get a couple of days that are good. Oh, yeah, I feel really focused. Saw this live stream. Wow, now I'm super focused, right? And uh, yeah, that's great. I'd be happy for that. But what I want to see is 10 years from now, an email from you saying, wow, that all lasted because you focused and helped us focus on the long term. And one of the things you can think of right now is how are you going to feel if you in 10 years have accomplished those big goals? Imagine that feeling now and um, you know, think about it. Maybe enter in the chat. How would you feel if you manage to accomplish all your big goals because you could focus consistently day in and day out, year after year, and all the weeks and days within those years, you know, think about that either privately or share. I know how I would feel. I would feel absolutely on top of the world that I could look back, not with this Ivan Ilyich kind of situation where I wished that I would have lived my entire life differently. I would want to feel back, look back and go, you know what, every single day, I was there, I showed up and you know, I was what I wanted to be. And that maybe comes with a bit of pride. Maybe that comes with, you know, some things that we might not normally praise amongst ourselves, but why not? Why not have that pride in yourself that you showed up as your highest possible self instead of sitting on your deathbed, wishing and hoping and praying that you'd done it all differently. Wishing you had tweaked a few things is one thing, but um, wishing that you'd done it differently and showed up is a much better, uh, uh, is, you know, is a terrible hell, really, if you, if you sit there and you're dying and you have to punish yourself because you didn't live to your highest possible degree. So I, that, I always think about that. It's kind of like a memento mori. In fact, that story from Tolstoy changed my life. I, I, I mean, a lot of things changed my life. It's kind of hard to reduce it down to that one thing. But when I think about the literature that really hit to the bone, it was that story of the old man sitting on his deathbed thinking of all the things that he should have done, but he didn't out of lack mentality, worry about scarcity, ridiculous concerns over ego and what people will think and oh, no, no, no. instead of you know living to the fullest potential and doing what you wanted in the moment even just trying to do what you want i'd rather live a life and say oh well that didn't work instead of i wish i had right so uh, one way to do that of course is to have a memento mori i always have two on my desk there's Mr. Death who always says, catch you later, <laughs> which he indeed will. Sounds a bit morbid, but, you know, it's actually quite positive, I think. And then, of course, the Amor Fati coin, which uh, means, you know, the love of fate. And we have to love our fate. We really do. Um, and the other thing, of course, that I have is the great warrior of the mind emblem from Tony Buzan, the brain cell, to remind us to take care of that brain. All right, so we want to focus on long-term lifestyle tactics. Kai says, I need a message like this probably. Well, I'm glad to be here. Crona Woman Walking says that she will feel superhuman. Excellent. Feel superhuman. That's the way to, to approach it, right? Because we get to define what human is. And we're going to talk a little bit about definition. It's, it's a really important skill, and there's good science behind it. Now, that's the first thing, the first category we're going to work on, lifestyle tactics. Very, very important important to do that. And uh, then we're going to talk about in the moment calibration. So if you want things that you can do to focus immediately, stick around. We're going to dive directly into a number of calibrations. What is calibration? Well, you're unfocused and then all of a sudden you do one little thing, bam, you're focused. That's what calibrating is. And we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about maintenance. So maintenance is kind of the same thing as the long life uh, lifestyle tactics for the long term, but also it's a little bit different in its way. So these are the three categories that we're going to work on. And before we get started, I see Crone Woman Walking is here, but I want to thank all the people who have jumped in to support the channel. To be serious. I love that name, To Be Serious. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Thank you so much. SDFG has jumped on as a channel member. George Spulber has jumped on. One hiccup. Ab here, Debbie, Debbie, and Chrome One Walking, of course, has been a supporter for many years now. NCJSP and George Lauder. Thank you, everybody, for becoming a channel member. If you haven't become a channel member, please do support this channel. We got what? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight now. Is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think so, if I can count correctly. Um, 
imagine if we had 800 just so you know part of this whole membership channel support thing youtube switched it on so i thought hey let's switch it on and uh, you should have a join button down there somewhere underneath the screen and i say imagine if we had 800 because i want to be able to hire a second video editor even someone who helps you know edit my scripts a little bit so they're more engaging just imagine if we had 800 supporters and all the things that we would be able to do with more content, more training out there for you, uh, maybe more often with more detail, with better scripting. Because, you know, I'm just a, uh, I'm just one guy. <laughs> and there's only so many things that one guy can focus on at a time. And one of the things that we want to be able to do is make this Magnetic Mary Method mission more effective for more people right so we need your support to do that so thanks to the channel members we start small but i'm already thinking and focusing on how can we make it grow so thank you and if you want to join up thank you as well all the information is there when you hit the join button and um you can see chrome walking has a very special symbol on her super chats there or her chats that um show up but you can also super chat if you like that's very fine indeed anyway kai says the gain is too loud not an engineer is anybody else having distortion let me know in the chat if you are also like kai experiencing distortion i uh let me look here all my levels seem fine but um i'll just turn it down just a tad and hopefully that will fix it for kai sean says microphone's all good on his end watching through youtube all right. Kai says, I'm working on being financially self-sufficient before I can help out financially. That's fine. Uh, you know, if you want to do that later, then later is good too. Thanks for uh, sharing that though. I mean, you got you to gotta take care of oneself so that you can take care of others, right? That's a very, very important thing. All right. So Dexter is in the house. Good to see you, Dexter. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's see. So we're going to go into these three categories. We're going to go in super deep. But before we go, just so that you know, because we always have issues when people don't know all the good, wonderful things that we're doing. Boris Conrad was on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. So if you haven't checked that out, please check it out. It's very relevant to what we're talking about today. Uh, cause you know, we have some alternating and altering and alternative views on, uh, things. And also we got deep into the science and also I asked Boris, like, how do you become a Guinness world record holder multiple times, a great memory competitor and a neuroscientist? How do you manage all that stuff? So he's got great tips for you that will help you focus, right? And, um, I focus. One of the things I'm focusing on is the new Art of Memory series. So part one and part two are done. Part one and part two. Check them out. I really, really appreciate everybody who's been watching those and commenting. This is kind of me indulging a little bit, but also for the supporters of this channel doing some things that I know they would hope that I would do, which is what if we taught memory like I used to teach film studies? as a professor, not worrying about the internet twitchy people who need it all in two seconds or I'm out of here. I, I've seen that comment. Wow, good good riddance is what the old professor in me would say uh, to the twitchy people. But this is the serious way that I would treat memory as a topic if I were teaching it at university. And I just imagined and asked people, you know, would you be interested in this? And so far, so good. Uh, so <laughs> I got a little bit of the old Bruno attitude there. Uh, but there's part one for you and part two is there. And if you don't know Bruno, you should, because then you'd know what I mean by the old Bruno attitude. But uh, we all love Giordano Bruno, those of us who know the tradition. And so there's uh, part two coming up for you there. And also, as a final note before we get started, the Victorious Mind pre-order stuff is going to end at some point here. But if you want to be able to get a free course called How to Stop Thinking, make sure you send me your receipt for the Victorious Mind. And there is your link to Amazon in your country. And uh, we really uh, look forward to launching that book. Another giant initiative where we want to help make sure that mental illness and depression and anxiety are no longer an issue for people. And we have all the science in the world to prove that linking memory and meditation is the path to reducing mental suffering. That's what the victorious mind is all about. And it'll help you stop thinking. So if you don't have your pre-order of the Kindle yet, 
run over to YouTube before this opportunity ends to get an additional free course called How to Stop Thinking. That link is there for you. It'll take you to the uh, Amazon store in your country. All right, long-term tactics. Let's talk about focusing on work at home or really anywhere in the world and how you can do this. The number one long-term tactic for focus that lasts year after year, getting better and better, stronger and stronger, would be to develop rituals. Now, a book I'm going to be recommending a few times and referring to a few times today is called Indistractable. It doesn't show up so well on the green screen here, but it's by Nir Eyal. He was on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. He gave a master class, really, on um, what the book is all about on that episode. And... One of the things about rituals that's really, really important is the more you practice them, the better you develop your focus because you're practicing focus itself in order to get the rituals done. And so I have rituals that I do every single day and they're very, very powerful and they really help frame the day. And so practicing framing your day is a great recipe for success. There's, uh, you know, I think it was Tim Ferriss who said, conquer the morning, conquer the day. And he may be quoting something, uh, but in any case, I remember that. And it's very, very true. Now, is it true for all people? I don't know. There are some research uh, studies I've read where some people, the morning is just not going to be their thing, right? <laughs> so you got to test, you got to study, but you can frame the day at any time. And this is the thing to understand is that your rituals can be for any time. But you still, if you're a human with a brain, you're probably going to be like every other human with a brain. You're going to need to have some consistency. And you're going to need to show up and you're going to need to frame things, right? So framing is a really, really important tactic. And rituals are a sort of frame that you can place on things. Dr. Langs, Robert Langs, he showed, I think, really well in his research that the unconscious mind loves frames and it is horrified by the absence of frames. And yet, strangely enough, the conscious mind thinks that it loves chaos and disorder. It loves variety. It loves all kinds of new and novelty and all this sort of stuff. But this doesn't really show up in actual practice according to his research. And I think it's true and you see it a lot. People reject chaos, even though they might consciously say that they love it. All of their self-punishing behaviors come from their deep unconscious dislike for a lack of framing in life. So you've got to figure that out for yourself and nobody can do it for you. That's the sort of cruel curse of things. And, you know, if you look into ancient literature and even movies, you see of the contemporary world, you see this all the time. You see an incredible amount of expressions of the love for frames. See you, Chrome Walking. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to your thoughts on the replay. Get a good sleep. Always wonderful to see you. Thank you so much. And uh, look, you know, let us know if you have any thoughts on the on the replay. So talk to you soon. Now, what are some examples of this unconscious expression of the need for frames? If you ever see the movie Saw, uh, right, which is, you know, a kind of a horror movie that I'm sure a lot of you don't watch those kind of movies. But if you see this, um, it's a great example of the unconscious need for frames and the self-punishment that comes when people don't have rituals and framing in their life. Shlomo is here from Israel. All right. Um, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I love Israel very much. I, I, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time there. Um, I, I, I hope you're doing well over there. I know you guys got ahead of the curve on this uh, thing, or so I've read in the news, and so that's very good. Anyway, unconscious need, and, you know, speaking of um, uh, Israel, in the in the Bible, you see a lot, uh, like in the uh, Tanakh and uh the Old Testament in particular, you see a lot of that expression of the unconscious need for a frame. So a lot of the, the whether they're right or wrong is, is not really the question, but in, in the framing of a lot of the rules and how that one is symbolic to God, as 
uh, as described in those texts, there is this unconscious wish and need for structure and frames in the world. The story of Job, for example, is a lot of a, a big lesson about what happens when chaos arrives and how do you establish frame in your life? How do you how do you how do you survive through that? How do you keep and maintain structure? Even if there's no quick or easy answer uh, or explanation for why things have gotten so bad, how do you still show up? Well, you just follow rituals. You develop rituals and you follow it. Anupam from Nepal. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Wonderful. Thanks for saying hello. So, you know, one of the things that you're going to want to do in order to um, make sure that you are able to concentrate and focus, have rituals that work in favor of creating uh, this for you is you're going to want to develop a number of concentration meditation tactics. And so one of the best things that you can do is show up and meditate. Ideally, every morning in my world, it might be a different time for you, but I don't always do my meditation first thing in the morning. For example, I might sometimes want to save my voice because I use my voice a lot in my meditation. Uh, this morning I happened to have used my voice. But if you need a master class in concentration meditations, follow the link down below or on the screen there's a link for you there. And one of the things that you can do is just pick the concentration meditation that makes the most sense for you and dive in and <laughs> make sure that you're learning to concentrate with meditation. Meditation is probably going to be the thing that helps the most people. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you take on any meditation is commit to four times a week minimum. And this is going to help you really get results because in the scientific studies they show that you know if you do any less than that, it's very unlikely that it's going to help. So four times a week minimum for whatever meditation you pick. And ideally, if you want to be able to focus better, pick meditations known to create better concentration. Not all of them will do it. So we've already gone through this. We don't need to go through it again. There's a link there for you on concentration meditation. The robots have shown me that this is one of the most popular on the channel ever. So, you know, if you missed it, then you might want to go and check out why. I don't know why the robots are saying that, but they are. So that's very good. Um, now, here's a long-term strategy for you that I would really, really uh, suggest for you is to tie the rituals and concentration meditations to a larger vision statement. So rather than saying, well, I'm just going to go and start working on my concentration and so forth, make sure that it's tied to some big picture that you want to accomplish, right? So what would that be? So it could be a big picture thing for your career. Uh, it could be for your family. It could be for general knowledge. And having a vision is really, really important. Why? Well, not only so that you can actually accomplish something, because if you're just like wandering through life, da, 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 then, you know, <laughs> not having a plan will certainly help you get nowhere, right? But if you want to get somewhere, you want to have a plan. But there's another reason to have a big vision. And that is because having a vision, knowing where you're going, knowing why you want to get there, and then having that help you figure out how you're going to get there, it gives you a decision matrix. And a decision matrix is uh, something that you want to make sure you have so that you know how to make decisions in the moment, such as when trouble comes. You know, Instead of just, well, that's the decision that I, I, I'm going to make randomly because you're forced to make a decision, you actually have something that you can look at, like your vision. Does this decision that I'm making help my vision in two minutes from now? in two weeks from now, in two months from now, in two years from now, in 20 years from now? If you can't answer those questions, then you can't really make a proper decision, right? So having a vision automatically gives you some sort of tools for a decision matrix. And in this case, the decision matrix that I'm suggesting is, is this decision I'm making going to serve in two minutes from now, two weeks from now, two months from now, two years, etc., right? And really think through each of those levels, each of those plateaus of time to help you figure it out. Now, I made a typo here. I, I apologize. I meant to say the not now folder, not the now now folder, but now now folder maybe is not such a bad term either. Because you could, and we'll talk about Dean Jackson's three envelopes. So maybe the now now typo is uh, <laughs> is not so, uh, re uh, not such a destructive force after all. But Back to the not now folder I meant to put there. 
one of the best lessons I ever had was in my fourth year of the BA in a romantic poetry course. And the professor said, you're going to have in throughout your life endless ideas, endless ideas. And you're going to need to ask of those ideas, is this right for right now? And then when you sort them out, put them on, on, on paper and put them in a folder. And then you can have the folder divided into a couple ways. Like he was talking, I believe, about a organ folder. You can have the sort of not now folder. And then you can have the immediate future folder. And then he said, eventually a lot of these things will evolve into the not ever folder. And this is just a simple mental sort of exercise that you can, it's almost like a Leitner box uh, in some sense where you can um, move things around. You can go into your not ever folder from time to time and then move it back into the now, now folder because you're going to do it now, now. I like this typo. <laughs> uh, or you can have, you know, revisit later. You could figure it out for yourself. You don't need uh, it described exactly, I hope. But, you know, not now folder. I love that. I, I'll never forget that, even though that professor gave me a hard time and I could whine and cry about all kinds of things that happened during that year. What a tough guy he was on me. I'm very grateful about it. So think about this. And think about how you can have a decision matrix for these different times and then actually write it out. Write it down. Write all these different options that you could be taking and then you can segment them onto little cards and put those cards into you know, an, or, uh, a, a, a collapsible folder with different segments and move them around over time. And that's basically what Dean Jackson's three envelopes are all about. And Dean Jackson, I have a link for you down below. He has this thing called the 50 minute focus finder. If you haven't gone through that, please check it out. It's an amazing training. And uh, he talks about having a brain dump and then extracting from your brain dump and then organizing things into envelopes. And you could have those envelopes. And I've done this in the past, envelopes on the door and assign those envelopes different values. So you could have the now, now folder must get this done now, or you can have the next month folder, and then you could have the not ever folder or whatever, and move those cards around. When you're, you know, instead of saying, okay, I've got my job done, what do I do next? Instead of wasting a second trying to figure out what to do next, you have an instant focus mechanism, because on the back of that door are three folders. The now, now folder has some index cards in it, and you just go and you go into the folder and you pick up the next one and it's like, oh, I need to use this memory palace to review. So I'm going to go and review my uh, Arabic vocabulary that's in there or my Chinese vocabulary or whatever the heck vocabulary is in there, right? And um, then you can say, okay, I did it. Now move it on to the next folder for review later. So that's cool. Another sort of thing, Dean Jackson's uh, partner uh, on the I Love Marketing podcast, he's, his name's Joe Polish. He talks about the three coins. So you could establish that one folder is the gold coin folder, the other one is the silver coin folder, and then the other one is like the bronze coin folder. And so you know that you're going to get further ahead in life if you work more on these gold coin tasks because those are the ones that are going to give you the biggest ROI, right? And then the silver coin tasks, they're more like, hmm, well, less so, but sometimes you need them for variety. So you go into the silver coin thing to do some of those things. And then the bronze coin ones, you could think, well, maybe I need to hire somebody to do those things for me. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget when I was in grad school and my wife at the time finally convinced me to just get the groceries delivered and you know hire a cleaner because those were bronze coin tasks. You know, it's not a huge expense if you really do the math. People are paying thousands a year to go to university and they won't spend another 10 bucks or whatever an hour to get somebody to do the cleaning for them when they could spend that time getting a maximum ROI on their investment in university tuition, right? It's just crazy thinking. So, you know, you might want to brain dump it's all these things that you're doing all the time that's taking away from your language learning goals, from your personal development goals, etc. Give them a bronze coin put them in that folder and then start to think, who could I hire, you know, to, to do these things so I can focus on silver and gold coin activities, like reading the books I want to read, like studying the language that I want to study, etc. This is how you can focus better. Even if you're at a job, let's put this this way, you're working from home right now because of the current situation, or you're working wherever you have to work, and you know, you want to rise the ladder, you want to get a promotion, you want to be able to perform better for your work, 
to get a raise or whatever it is, you can do the same activity for your boss. You can say, boom, I've identified at work here, Mr. Boss or Mrs. Boss, Mr. Manager, Mrs. Manager, etc., whatever they call themselves, foreman, whatever. I've identified that in my job, I'm doing a lot of these gold coin tasks only once in a while. And I'm doing a lot of these silver tasks a little bit more often, but still not as much as uh, I, I probably should. And you, you know, the way this organization has this, I'm spending so much time on these bronze coin things. So here's my idea. What if I just do all this other stuff? You could take that to the boss or you could just start doing it, right? And then your boss is gonna be thinking, oh my goodness, wow, you're so super productive. How did you do it? And then you say, well, I'll tell you what, give me a raise and I will tell you the secret. And then you get the raise and then you tell them about the uh, three coin envelope strategy that you learned today. All right, so let's check in with the chat and we'll carry on with some notes on mind maps and journaling. Uh, Anupan says, I try to follow the loci method as per your instruction, but for many books, I don't find places. Anupan, that's great that you're following that. Um, let me know more about, you know, how many memory palaces do you have? And, you know, exactly some more about how many stations you have in each and what are the books that you're studying. Barden is here, says, hello, good to see you, Barden. John says, had to laugh at your comment. This audience probably doesn't watch a lot of horror movies, and you're right, I don't. I probably won't stay too long because I have to read Chapter 11 for school. Go read Chapter 11. If you're, uh, if you're here and you're supposed to be doing something else that would forward your goals, come back and watch the replay or stick around because we got a lot coming for you. Chris is here. Good to see you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Tim says, now in Afrikaans means shortly. Now is eventually right now. Is now just now is later. Oh, interesting. I'll have to look into that. Very, now, now. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Get subscribed if you're not subscribed to this channel already. And let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Now, another thing that you can do is a lot of mind mapping and journaling to help figure this out. So whenever you're faced with a decision, you could put the decision keyword in the center and then start to use typical mind mapping tools to figure it out. That's another way to apply a decision matrix sort of thing. But decision matrix it basically assumes that you have a vision statement in place that you can always go back to to reassert your focus, right? So again, we're still in the long-term strategy segment of today's uh, live stream. We're going to look at instant calibration techniques in a moment, and then we'll talk about maintenance of all this at the end. But one of the things that we want to make sure that we have is this vision statement to ensure that when we need to focus, we have an idea of where we're going and how we're going to get there. Because if you don't have that, then guess what? The evil Dr. Forget is nipping at your heels and his heart is very cold very cold indeed. So you don't want the evil doctor forget to uh, get in the way of your vision, but your vision can just melt him like crazy. All right. Now, another thing that you can do is gratitude practice. And gratitude practice is very, very interesting because sometimes when we can't focus, you know, we need something to do that realigns ourselves. You can just spend a little bit of time writing down what it is you're thankful for. And that can reassert your focus very, very quickly because you have this immediate reawakening and awareness of all the good things that are going on. And usually when our focus is broken, we often have this little sob story switching on, which is um, very sad indeed, right? And how exactly does, does that switch on? Everybody needs to do a little bit of analysis. And while you're doing your gratitude journaling, which is just very simple, 10 things uh, that you know, you're very grateful for, water, food, having a home, having some family, whatever it is that you're grateful for, you can just start to think, how do I forget this stuff every day? And then make it part of your daily ritual to write down the things you're grateful for, to reassert and train yourself to think about what it is you're grateful for again and again and again. This is great memory practice, but it's also just great feel good practice. And it's a great way to reassert your focus because, you know, if you forget that you're grateful for the family that you take care of or whatever it is, then you know you could waste a lot of time that could be zeroed in, dialed in on achieving some goals. Now there's some obvious common sense stuff that we should go through here as well. 
for the lifestyle long-term things like making sure you have enough water. I always try to make sure I have enough water. As a matter of fact, let's reassert that right now. Do, 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 do. Glug, 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 glug. Very important to have water. Diet, fitness, sleep, and regular memory exercise. So we're gonna talk about some memory exercise you can do today to reassert your focus. And I think you'll find it very, very powerful. Now, for the long term, here's something that I wanna honor all of you for today because you're here and you're practicing it right now, which is short content fasting. And that means detox yourself from short content. You know, the internet is just wired to show you videos that are four minutes long, dopamine spike you, and then get you watching more short-term videos, dopamine, 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 dopamine. This is frying the brain. And even if, you know, it's not frying yours, it certainly has fried mine. And I have to regularly reassert a short content fasting, knowing that, oh, I've fallen down into this algorithm again. Now, it's not so bad because there are segmented blocks of time where I allow myself to play around on the internet and uh, gu guzzle down certain things. And there's a place for it. There's a place for short-term content, a couple minutes of the news, etc., to be patched into what's going on. But it can quickly become this <clears throat> rabbit hole algorithm void that just takes you and spikes your brain and you're on and on and on and on and on and you're just listening to something and you're itching to switch itching to switch and this is not good this is not good for being a person who can focus all of the focus breakdown that we see happening so much where people just react just whiplash reactions to things on on all of these little commenting media they don't even think about what they're saying is coming, I think, from an addiction to response, an addiction to switching from this, that, to the other thing. And it's not healthy. It's not good. So one of the things to do in short content fasting is make a commitment to spending time on long form content and figuring out what it's going to be. And one of the things you'll find is that you might have a hard time doing it in the beginning. So what you can do is learn a little thing called Shavasana, sometimes spelt with an H, sometimes just with an S, but even with just an S, it's apparently in the, in the Sanskrit spelt or pronounced Shavasana. So this means just laying without moving in corpse pose. This will help you develop focus because you have to focus on staying still. And then you can listen to videos, long-term videos. Pick a very, very detailed conversation that people are having or a long lecture 45 minutes at least, and just see how long you can stay there and listen. And then make yourself a student of your own twitchiness. Try to think, well, how long was it before I started wanting to watch something else, right? Before I got all twitchy. And this is a, a very powerful thing to study and practice. And then see if you can extend. See if you can get yourself through long form interviews. Now, if you can't uh, manage it, and you're, you find that you want to switch to something else, you're bored or whatever, you want to get another thing, try interleaving. And so what I mean by interleaving is before you start short content fasting, have three or four things in a playlist ready to go from three different topics. So for example, right now I'm getting back into Bert, uh, Bart Ehrman's stuff about uh, the Bible and, and uh, specifically New Testament things. And so... To have long form things as one content segment, it's just Bart Ehrman stuff. So a minimum 45 minutes each piece of content to practice focusing for the long term. And then as a second topic, there's all the hermetic stuff that I'm researching right now. And just interleave back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I find interleaving very, very good, not only for having... Uh, long-term focus and so forth, but for accomplishing large learning projects, which is very, very uh, good thing to do. And then have three topics max. So, you know, this isn't licensed to have 45 different topics that you're studying. Try and contain it to three. So imagine you have three playlists. Every single set of videos is a minimum of 45 minutes. And then you practice getting through as much as you can of each one without moving. That's what Shavasana is. Laying on your back, not moving anything, and staying that way for as long as you can, until that you can. So, uh, and then you sort of 
uh, making an awareness. You can even set a, a timer and see how long is it really before you are compelled to move, before you are compelled to switch. Cookie is in the house. Hey, bro, what's up? What's up with you, Cookie? Good to see you. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing. And if you have any questions about memory, etc., now is the time to um, let me know. And let me know how you're surviving during these times because uh, I'm very curious. And if you have anything whatsoever you want to talk about live, this is the chance. And if you are watching the replay, get involved in the discussion, the after show discussion below. I always love your comments later and appreciate them. Now, here's a cool memory exercise you can do while you're in your Shavasana. So you're thinking about something and you, you, you memorize in real term, in real time, what it is that you wanted to check up on later. So I remember the Bart Ehrman thing I was just listening to. He was talking about Coptic, the Coptic language. And I was like, oh, I want to go and do some more studies in, in the Coptic language. So I just use a memory palace, have an image of the cop from Monopoly there who's dragging the guy off. And then later I go, what was it that I wanted to remember? Oh, right, I wanted to look up into Coptic language and study more about that. Oh, right. So Cookie asks, best book on memory, the top five. Great, I'll review the questions at the end and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. That's a great question, Cookie. The best top five books for memory. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan says, just found your site in Wisconsin. People here are pretty cheery still. Lots of people out walking in the neighborhood and the state parks. No despair in Wisconsin. Well, that's good to hear. Thanks, Jonathan, for being here and letting us know about how things are in Wisconsin. Beautiful, beautiful state. All right. So memorizing in real time is a wonderful thing to practice. One great way to do it is while you're consuming long form content because you're fasting from short form content and you're practicing focusing. This has huge, tremendous knock on effects, not only for memory, but now you're concentrating and you're listening. What am I going to memorize? And try to think that you're going to um, memorize three to five things as you listen to long form content. Now, if you're not there yet, take notes as you go. There's nothing wrong with taking notes. In fact, it's a great way to focus and concentrate on long form content. It's just not possible to do Shavasana if you're taking notes. So, you know, you're, you can probably figure out which ways to, um, which ways to, to take notes best. But if you need help, here's a, a video on the site that will help you figure out how to take notes. So please feel free to go through that. Hit a thumbs up while you're watching it. Let the robots know with a comment that you love it. I'll see. I'm not a robot, and I will answer. And that'll be great. Great, 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 great. All right. So, Cookie, no, that's not my site. Although, people do say that they uh, enjoy my contributions over there. So, um, <clears throat> look for me. See, Say hello over there. I don't always get properly notified, but um, I do check in from time to time. We also have a forum, cookie, at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash forum. Jonathan Gao says, you have a lot of memory on YouTube. Where should I start? Thanks for asking about that. I'd actually recommend that you start by getting subscribed if you aren't already, enabling the notifications so you get the new stuff. And then so that everything makes sense, take the free course on my site itself. Those videos are not on YouTube at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT. And once you go through there, then I would go through my playlists and see which of the playlists make the most sense for you that are interesting to you based on having some goals. And you might want to, if you're just going to stick on uh, YouTube, which I don't recommend, I recommend you take that course on my site, then uh, get yourself together a vision statement and you can watch this link here that ends with a zero, VKJ0 to help you craft a vision statement. And this vision statement will help you think about what it is that makes the most sense for your memory goals, because you'll have a vision for your memory. And that's a very, very important thing. Uh, and then I would start you know, with this note-taking tips video, which will help you get some ideas about how to get the most out of the content that you're guzzling down, mine and any content really, so that you can make it actionable. Chris says, Anthony has a new book coming out this month. You can pre-order it. It looks like it will be really good. Thank you, Chris, uh, for mentioning it. Yeah, I appreciate that. The new book is called The Victorious Mind, How to Master Memory, Meditation, and Mental Well-Being. 
The mission behind that book is something I've been working on for years. Part of it I haven't studied yet because I don't actually have a home where I live with full permission to do this, but I, I want to start a foundation that will help educate doctors more about the research and the science behind linking memory and meditation to mental health issues, helping you reduce mental suffering, and then, you know, just using the tradition. So this is a, a memory book with all the good old stuff, the so-called adherenium pattern. Um, and uh, this is going to really, really help uh, a lot of people, I hope. And with your help, it'll help me help many others. So thank you again, Chris, for mentioning it. And um, yeah, I'll be uh, doing more mentioning of it myself in, uh, in the very, very near future. We're ramping up. The layout is still uh, being manipulated a little bit in order to make it the best possible quality we can get. But uh, so far, it's looking great. There's just a, a couple of typographical things because it's a serious book. It's got a, a lot of, it's, you know, it's got an index, for example, and those page numbers all have to be correct. <laughs> all right. So Tim T says, on which note will I find the note taking tips video? So the, um, there, there's a, a, a list of links in the description that you should see underneath this live stream if you're watching on YouTube. And, uh, it's labeled as note-taking tips, five note-taking tips that force you to remember more. And I've just put it into the chat as well. It's the one that ends with VKJO, or zero, better said. And Barbara says, Jonathan, the free course on the website is awesome. The paid class has a schedule of suggested order to learn things in. That's way easier than picking and choosing from YouTube. That's right, Barbara, and thank you so much for uh, mentioning that. And Jonathan says, by memory course, you mean the memory kit on the website. Yes, Jonathan, that's what we mean. The kit is exactly that. The course is in the kit, but the kit has all that, all that you need, like a fishing kit. And you just use the tools that you need when you need them, and you learn how to use them through the course. So apologies if that's a little bit uh, confusing, but all our data suggests that it's not really that confusing at all because of the thousands of people who have, um, have, have taken it. And you know, one of the things that's really a, a bit of a mystery to me is why that so many people send me their homework and others don't. I think that I'm not sure what to do better there, but, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a puzzle. It's a mystery. So what would you imagine getting out of life if you paid so much attention that you noticed the homework exercise from video one compared to those who don't. Because I find that most of the people who send me their homework wind up telling me their stories uh, and those who don't, don't. And there's something about homework, right? So focus on the actual things that you sign up for. Do you like to get results in life? Let me know in the chat. Like, do you take a course and do you like to get results from them? Let me know yes in the uh, chat if that's you. Because I'm sometimes surprised by the amount of people who, um, who, would, who would say no to such a proposition. But it's possible. It's possible. All right. Jonathan says, good. Found the presentation intro. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Cookie says, yes. All right. We got one yes. 80-20 rule in effect. Okay. So carrying on, one of the things that I recommend, this has to do with the vision statement, is have long-term learning projects multiple ones, right? So it doesn't have to be all of these, but interleaving is a big thing. Interleaving works. It means having more than one thing that you switch around from in order to get the most, right? Because your brain stress on and just on one, 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 one thing, it can leave it pretty ragged. Now you might be thinking, but don't you always say to focus on one thing at a time? Well, yes, I do. But focus on one thing inside of at least three things in order to get some mental relief. So a topical study, an example right now, I'm doing my major memory project, which is now in the hermeticism world. And you might have noticed that I've been talking about it for a long time. I remember the first hermeticism live stream that we did. And then I thought, now I'm going to get into this. So I did. And I read 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 and I read. And then finally, the time came to start to write. And then I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And now Art of Memory Part 1 and Part 2 are out, working on the script for Part 3. 
And, um, you know, that was a longer term thing, but it's just an example of a topical study that I myself am doing and am sharing with you uh, about the art of memory. And this is the hermeticism field. Now there's <laughs> a lot more outside of that as well. And of course, you get all kinds of surprises that are wonderful when you do topical study because I didn't I didn't notice the first time that I read Art of Memory because I hadn't read um, uh, Giordano Bruno and the Hermetic tradition uh, as thoroughly as as I might have either. But I didn't really notice just how off the mark Yeats was. But that's what happens when you get into a deep topic and you really start to read the secondary texts. You read the primary texts, and uh, if you watched. Oh, man, this is a heavy pile of books today for our book and resource sharing section of the presentation. But if you read this very, very thoroughly, you just you see just how off the mark Yates was. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. <gasps> but I myself have read this in a in a in a cursory way that didn't quite um, pay it its due. And then I read it again and I read it again and I read it again. And I go, wow. Wow, amazing what this is really saying. So that's part of what the Art of Memory course is all about. Anyway, topical study. It'll take you on many wonderful wild adventures. Please, 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 please devote yourself to a long-term learning project. It's up to you what it is. And if you have to, do something like we've already talked about today. Watch Dean Jackson's 50-minute focus finder. Write down all the things, or mind map, journal, all the things that you could use as a lifetime, long-term project. Dive in, stick with it for at least 90 days, or until that you decide, oh, this is nothing, and get rid of it, and then do it again, and find something, and stick with it. It's really, really transformative to know something deeply, okay? And... Um, that doesn't mean that you know it right. If you're, if you're a really honest, ethical individual and a mature learner, you're far beyond right and wrong, right? You're a scientific person. You know what science is. You're just gathering evidence that confirms and denies propositions. You have mental frameworks that help you rotate in your mind what a proposition is in the first place. And you start to think, Ah, so 1500 this and oh 1610 that in, in if it's a historical thing and these different figures what they thought and you don't have such hard and fast conclusions anymore rather you have considerations and this is a, a beautiful thing to develop in your mind and in your life so that you're able to just function as a considerate being and this is what Bruno wanted he wanted you to be able to act in the world with wisdom and this is how you do it by having long-term projects where you deeply understand topics. Aristotle wanted that for you too. It's not particularly new. I think Iron Man probably would recommend it also. I mean, look at Iron Man. He's just deep into the weeds of very singular topics. And because he's an entrepreneur, he's a little bit better at, you know, eh, give me a little bit of this on that project and give me a little bit of that on that project. But entrepreneurialism is one of his deep topics. It doesn't really matter because Iron Man doesn't exist, but it's a good example of that sort of archetype, right? Barbara says, I'm enjoying learning new ways to play with my mind. So yes, I love being able to apply what I learn with memory, but also to apply what I'm learning about playing with my mind. Excellent, Barbara. That is great. Wonderful, wonderful. Tim says, yes, excellent. Jonathan asks, did you get, do you get into the do you get into the Garden of Memory Ars Memoria? I read an article on this as on an occult website and was quite intrigued. Can this lead to memories of past lives? Uh, Jonathan, I have a post, and I believe I made a podcast episode of it, if memory serves, on my website about past lives. The answer is, if you can find evidence of past lives, man, do we ever have <laughs> an interesting thing to, uh, to talk about. Uh, but I uh, would predict that you could not find evidence of past lives. If you watch part two of the, or if you watch the Art of Memory series, you'll see why that the whole notion of past lives, I think, is is less spectacular, less stellar than other conclusions one could make about this life right now. Uh, and this old chap here, Giordano Bruno, could be very instructive. Uh, and the whole notion of a cult Bruno, no, no, and a thousand times no. People thought he was into the occult, and I don't know why, um, but 
Francis Yates seems to have had something to do with that. All right. So other things for long-term projects, learning a language, playing a musical instrument, or something physical like a skill, like, uh, for example, juggling. Juggling is a wonderful thing. I'm not exactly a teacher of juggling, and I don't think I can do it in this live stream setup, but um, juggling is really good to, to learn, and you can add challenges to your juggling uh, in order to make it a bit more difficult. So there's videos on YouTube of me juggling, doing the alphabet backwards, etc., singing Chinese songs, all kinds of things. These, by the way, are a very fond memory. These are the Think Buzan juggling balls. Um, Tony himself gave them to me and uh, very, very happy to have them here as a reminder to juggle. And it's a physical activity. I didn't think I would ever even be able to learn how to do it, but I have, and it's very good for the brain. And it's a physical long-term learning project to add new tricks, etc. It could be swimming, it could be a martial art, it could be fitness things at the gym, etc. Uh, fitness things at the gym are particularly interesting long-term projects because then you learn more about muscles. I've come to know more about muscles than I ever imagined I would or even wanted to, but I'm glad that I did, and it's a very good thing. So the whole point is have long-term learning projects, it's really fundamental. And then what you end up having, when you, when you use the principle of interleaving, which means you allow yourself to switch from topic to topic within a small limited field, then you have variety, you have all that need for variety, you have diffuse thinking, what's called diffuse thinking, and um, you get more out of it. And you know what, even just five to 10 minutes of a daily touch can be tremendously centering. And one of the things that I love about the conquer the morning, conquer the day principle is that there are certain things that I touch upon every day and I know I've just touched upon them and then I'll come back to them later. But if I miss the full meal deal, I at least know I did something that day to move myself towards that goal. So for example, this morning, I only was able to look a little bit at what I'm memorizing from the Bhagavad Gita, but at least I did that touch. Now, I don't know how the day is going to go. I have planned on the schedule to go and memorize another line. But should I not get back to it, I at least did that daily touch. And it is centering to be able throughout the day, because you have a morning ritual, to be able to say, I have done the things that were most important to me. And I did them before I turned the internet on, before I reached for the phone, before that I allowed the tsunami of the world to come in. So... This is really, really important, and I would highly recommend that you get this sorted. So we're done part one of today's presentation, which was to focus on the long-term goals of being a person who can focus on work, right? And as I said at the beginning, we're going to talk about in-the-moment things you can do to calibrate, but there's no point in just giving you some things that you might do for two or three days. You've got to really to feel the full benefit do things that last for years, that set the stage so that you can practice for years and that you will practice for years. Because one of the things that you want to understand, and we'll get to later, is that this is a game of neurochemistry. And it's a game anybody can win. All they have to do is show up at the only casino where you actually can win. What is that casino? It's called your life. And if you treat it not as a casino, but as a laboratory, you can actually win if you run the experiments properly. All right, so who's ready to talk about in the moment calibration? Who would like some tips and tricks and strategies where you can get focused like that at a, at a second's notice? The only catch is that you have to remember to actually do these things. Who would like that? Let me know in the chat if you're ready for this. Barbara says, me. Jonathan says, cool, thanks. Oh, <clears throat> that was a previous thing. Let me know if this is... Uh, of interest to you because I've got a couple of things here. Obviously, you're not going to be juggling at work or anything like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe you will be. I don't know. Chris says, let's go. Awesome, Chris. Thank you for that. Um, I think that, I mean, I've been using a lot of these things for years. I'm a, I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of things that not just, you know, some guy says, yeah, do this, but things that actually work, that there's some science behind or there's at least an individual recommending them that actually does these things. I think that that's uh, pretty interesting and important. 
Uh, I don't know about you, but I do. So this isn't just random stuff. And uh, to introduce you to a guy that set me on a, a wonderful adventure, um, his, his course is really good because I'm a logical person. I, I like to see that there's science behind things. I just don't want to go doing willy-nilly stuff. Anyway, his name is Puccio, and um, he has a course that I've linked you to that you can take. It's called the Creative Thinker's Toolkit. And Dr. Puccio is a wonderful thinker about creativity, what creativity really is. And one of the things that I'll never forget from this course was the scientific research behind creativity drills. Now, we want to step back from creativity, and there's a lot of definitions and terminology on creativity that you can, you can get into the weeds of. But creativity is not what we think it is. Creativity is not just inventing things out of nothing. So a lot of people think that, though. Well, I'm not creative. Well, yes, you are. You're creative all the time. You couldn't even open the fridge if you weren't creative. Uh, and this is very easy to understand once you, once you get what creativity really is. First of all, just think of the idea of the word original, right? Because we often think that creativity means that you're going to create something original. Well, the very origin of the word original is of origin. So there's really no idea of original. Uh, and even unique, right? The whole no notion of uniqueness is still coming out of an origin. And it must. Because where else would things come from except from an origin? Except from the world, right? So um, you can see massive amounts of creativity tend to come from playing with pre-existing elements. And this is the thing that is so hard uh, to make it clear to people with memory techniques. You don't need to be creative. In fact, you have to suppress your need to be creative <laughs> because you don't want to rebuild the wheel. You don't want to reinvent it. What you want to do, and this is something in Bruno, it's loud and clear. And so many people, uh, they sort of miss this point, which we talked about in part two of the Art of Memory series. He's not getting you, he's not wanting you to rebuild his memory systems. He's wanting you to dig into your own pre-existing knowledge so that you don't have to recreate the wheel. You don't have to be creative at a minim, minute's notice. But you're drawing upon what's already there so that what's original is of origin, right? So if you want any of the science behind this, take Puccio's course. It is absolutely fantastic. And it'll give you the science behind a lot of this. And one of the scientific things that's always stuck with me, always stuck with me, is the research behind tiny little creative drills as a warm-up to the big things that you need to do. So if you have to go to work and you have to be on, you have to be switched on, a small little creative exercise can help you focus a lot more for the big meaningful stuff. So when I learned that and went through that research, I started to treat how I was memorizing information from languages that I was learning a little bit differently. And what I started to do was just memorize cards before memorizing vocabulary. So let's say we're going to work on 10 phrases or 10 pieces of vocabulary. Instead of just diving deep and, okay, we've got our memory palace, let's go, Chinese, 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 or German, 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 or whatever it's going to be, Start with just a deck of cards, or a quarter of a deck of cards, even. Just a simple little creativity exercise, right? So, boom, there we got a card, and we just, we're not really creating anything, because we're prepared. We already have the image for this, right? Which is chain, and sometimes I see the chin, double chin person there, fat bastard from... Uh, Austin Powers movies and so forth. And then we're going to have the next thing. This is the foil, right? Tin foil hat, the foil, the sword, etc. <clears throat> I'm not even sure we're allowed to say that guy's name on the internet anymore. But anyway, now we have something like creativity because we're going to have one thing acting on the other. And we now think of how this uh, character, either Fat Bastard or the person from Hellraiser who shoots a chain out of her palm, is now going to interact with this thing of origin, right? We are not creating anything new, but we're taking two things, an origin from two things, and we're putting them together. And that's how you go. And then you go on to the next one. So now this is the lamb, Lammy Lamington, or whatever that name was. Sometimes you don't even remember what your images are. And now we add this. Anyway, 
instead of spending all this time on the whole deck of cards, just just a quarter of the deck, 13 cards, boom, then you go into the next thing. And this creates this nice little pocket of focus that quickly disperses, and now you're warmed up for the next thing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's so wonderful. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be playing cards. If you're not into playing cards, which why wouldn't you be? It's one of the most fun and fulfilling little memory drills that you can do. You can also just memorize straight up numbers like this. Oh, look at that. That's the lasso. L, zero. L, S, lasso. Which lasso? How about the one from Wonder Woman? Whatever. Is that a lasso? I don't know, but that's what I use sometimes. Sometimes I'll use a laser gun, etc. And then we go 18, right? And so that's... Uh, the, the sweet transvestite from Transylvania, from uh, what is it called? Rocky Horror Picture Show, dancing on a TV usually in my memory. And then here we have Nick Nolte, 27, etc. right? And then we just, just a couple of them, memorize them that before we go into a major exercise. This is huge for focusing. Anybody can have one of these at their desk, whether you're working at home or you're working at the office, etc. You can have these things. I do not recommend digital. I recommend the actual physical thing like that. If you want to use digital, well, you know, peace be with you. Uh, I just not not really into that. If anything, split test so you actually can see the difference for yourself because my opinion is irrelevant on the matter. You need to see, but just be radically honest if there's a difference. And uh, no, don't guess, no, because your preference is evil, right? You, you, your preference can lock you out of progress. And I test this myself. So I've played a lot with the digital apps just to test, to make sure. And I can see a bit of a weakness. And so every once in a while, I'll practice with the digital things. But here's the secret. I never need to memorize anything in the digital world, except for when I'm on podcasts and people give me memory tests, but they're not really digital because it's usually heard. They say, they say to, well, it's always heard so far in my experience. Um, they'll say a bunch of numbers or names or whatever, and then I'll, I'll memorize them, but it's not really using a software like you see some people offering, and there's nothing wrong with those things. Play with them if you will. John Graham and I have a nice conversation on the podcast about that if you would like to check it out. Um, but the point being is know for yourself. Don't guess. And I'm pretty confident that you probably get more benefits from these from what I've seen in research and my own experience about the nature of the one-to-one -one correspondence between what's here and what's here. And later this week, we're going to release a video that talks more about that science uh, in a fun and compelling way. And watch out for that video. It's called. It's going to be called something uh, to the order of five memory palace examples. And we'll talk about why the real is so important based on Stephen Costlin's research in the case for mental imagery. So anyway, again, you've got to find for yourself. So I'm not trying to lay out some dogma, but cards, numbers, actual things you can touch, memorize, 10 seconds, 15 minutes, whatever it is, just spend a little bit of time doing this. Um, and uh, we're going to update the, 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 the masterclass soon with something from this very special deck. Woohoo! You're going to love that. So if you're in the masterclass, look out for that soon. All right. So that's uh, something there. Another creativity drill you can do is just guided doodling. And one of the guided doodling things I love is this book called The Cosmic Journal. And every day, if you go through it, you get a, um, a nice little journal entry, and then you're guided to either write some stuff or just do some doodles of your own. Um, and usually they come with some sort of doodle. And so you could find lots of these journals that prompt you to do some kind of doodle, right? Um, you could just doodle in just generally before that you need to do some kind of hard work, right? So keep that in mind that you can just do some doodling. So that's a very short in the moment calibration that you can do a short, quick creativity exercise. You can memorize some cards. You can do some doodling. I'm sure there's other creativity exercise you could think of. Uh, one that comes to mind, I think it's called Garfield minus Garfield or something like that. So uh, if you haven't seen it, the, basically, the, what the person did is, is uh, they just took Garfield out of the the cartoons, 
And so you just see like, what is this Garfield's owner's name? John, I think. So you just see John usually just talking to himself, right? That's a great little creativity exercise that you could play around with is take a pre-existing thing and then remove something from it. Um, and this is a, a wonderful exercise. And this reminds me of another exercise that you could do, which is called a lipogram. And a lipogram is when you write something and you force yourself to, to not use a letter. So imagine that you took a line from Shakespeare, like, um, I don't know, uh, tickle us, do we not laugh, prick us, do we not bleed, wrong us, do we not revenge. And you had to rewrite that without using the letter E, right? So that would be a lipogram. So tickle us, do we not laugh? Well, that's only got one E, but we can't say tickle. So we have to write this line in a way that doesn't have an E. And this is already a huge creativity focus challenge. How am I going to say tickle us, do we not laugh without using the letter E? So I can't say make us laugh or make you laugh because that's got the letter E. I can't say render laughter upon you because render and laughter have the letter E. Anyway, I'm not going to do it now but because that would cause some sort of radio silence and oh my god we wouldn't want that but can you see what a great little focus challenge that would be just one line from Shakespeare or whatever that you like that you have in memory and then you have to rewrite it without the letter E very short beautiful crisp focus thing then you get to work right so try to invent your own creativity exercises and then dive into the heavy lifting job that you have to do, I think you'll find that you're much more focused, you're much more attentive, you get more out of it, and you don't have to take my word for it because there's all kinds of research that shows, and some of the biggest corporations are using this to get more out of their people, and uh, you can do it too without working for a major corporation, and if you are, you're probably working at home right now, and I hope these thoughts and ideas are helping you out. If you're just joining us, Hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Get subscribed to this channel if you're not already subscribed. And um, let me know if you are, if you are indeed. What are you grateful for right now? I said that we needed to do some gra gratitude exercises. What are you grateful for? Uh, I love these cards here, Bring Gratitude. They, they're a great way to remind yourself to be grateful if you, if you, if you forget. And... Um, let me know in the chat because one of the things that it says here, the benefits of gratitude is it can help you be more productive, can build a more resilient mindset, improve your memory, find creative solutions to difficult problems and grow your confidence. Oh my goodness, there's not a single person who has anything that they're grateful for to share in the chat. What a sad world we are in today. Not one. My goodness, what are you guys doing? I am grateful for you. And I am grateful for YouTube. I'm grateful for the internet. I'm grateful for Iron Man who supplied us with an interesting idea today. I'm grateful for the woolly store that sells the Iron Man cup. I am grateful for Cookie who said, so you start from memorizing cards at first. You don't have to start there. Everybody should you know, think about what it is they want to get out of the memory tradition and, um, and then craft a path and then use that vision to help them figure out what they could memorize in life that would get them ahead of the curve so that you're able to absolutely hit the ground running with these techniques and get these dopamine spikes in your brain so that you get victory and then you're, you're, you're being there to, um, to be your best possible self. So you can start with cards. Cards are fun. All right, now we're getting some stuff in the chat here. Thank you, everybody. Barbara says, grateful for being able to work at home during this virus thing. Yeah, that's good. That's that's a way to make the best out of it. I'm used to working at home, but uh, yes, we, got, we, we can be grateful for that. I mean, isn't it wonderful to, um, to have a home, <laughs> first thing? Chris says, grateful for you. Grateful for you, Chris. Thank you for being here. Lee is grateful for his health. Excellent, Lee. Thank you for being with us, Lee. Really appreciate it. Bill says, grateful for your info. Lee is grateful for this info. Tim says, grateful for the beautiful day today that allowed me uh, to spend hiking. Oh, wonderful. Hiking is beautiful. Glad, glad about that. David's grateful for health, memory, family, job, and Dr. A. <laughs> Thank you for that. Barbara says, grateful for the focus help. Thanks. Awesome. So never forget that according to the Bring Gratitude cards, 
this is good for your memory. And I agree. Uh, I'm not sure what research that that's based on, but if you do a gratitude exercise, of course, it's good for your memory. Write down just to use a number, 10 things that you're grateful for, you're exercising your memory, right? And if you reassert it every day, maybe you get some of these. Uh, they're from Carl Steib here, or Steib. Um, they're just amazing. His recommendation is that you put them near your toothbrush, right? And they're, you know, they're, they're nicely coated so that they could be there. And um, you just use them. And you remember, brushing your teeth, be grateful for your, uh, for your teeth. Be grateful for your toothbrush, etc. Um, there's lots of little exercises here that can help switch on gratitude. So thank you, everybody, who participated and sharing what you're grateful for. I am grateful for you. Grateful for the people who became channel members, especially. I will thank you again before the end. The goal is to get 800. We have eight. And just so you know, if you haven't heard before, I'd love to be hiring a second editor for this channel and also somebody who can help edit my scripts so that they're 10 times better than what I do on my own. And uh, I think that will be a wonderful thing for this channel. Chris says, I'm grateful for all the essential workers risking their lives. Absolutely. What an amazing amount of courage it must take to not run, you know, screaming. Obviously, people have a lot of stress and strain around exposing themselves to this. There's so many unknowns, so we should all be very, very grateful for that. Thank you for mentioning that. And uh, let's continue working on gratitude. Commit to keeping a journal and writing out your gratitude. This helped cure my, or it was a part of the cure of my depression for so many years. I've never stopped doing it. And it's just an incredible exercise. Very good to do. Mohammed is here. Good to see you, Mohammed. Thank you for being here. Hello. AG is in the house. Hello. Thank you for being here. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so who's ready for some more in the moment calibration? I started with this creativity drill stuff because I think if you if you hear what we talked about today and start to experiment with it, you'll be amazed. Now, how long should you do this? 90 days. Just 90 days. Period. Everything should be 90 days. This is this is something that I thought, "Oh my god, how am I going to get through 90 days of anything?" But it's true. It's true. You need that to build the neurochemical connections. Um, and I, I do it again and again and again. You know, I always tell the people in the master class, the uh, guided meditation walk through MP3s that I created for you all there. 90 days just because that's what it takes. Now, do you have to do it every day for 90 days? At least four times a week. Uh, but it, it causes a switch. At least, and you know, it's not a bull magic bullet either. You you've got to see for yourself how that works. But if you don't do that sort of minimum, it's very unlikely that the that the the brain chemicals that are involved in this are going to form. Anyway, you, you don't have to take my word for it. Better scientists than I have gone through this. You'll find it in Atomic Habits. You'll find it in uh, Daniel Coyle's The Talent Code. You'll find it in Richard Wiseman's 59 Seconds. Endless research data around this. Uh, and I've seen it work out in my life again and again and again. I'm in an entrainment program now. My 90 days is up, but I continue to do it. But I've seen the f switch, the fix, the change. And it's very, very important to keep that principle in mind. All right, so what else can we do? Breathing can calibrate you in the moment. So one of the things that we can do is auf die Plätze fertig los, I believe the Germans say. Ready, set, go. And um, what you want to do with this kind of breathing is just what it sounds like. Three, two, one, go. And you're ready to focus. You get distracted. You notice that you're distracted. You need to get focused again. Three, two, one, go. Whew. Now, I learned this from Tony Buzan and Phil Chambers as one of the things that you do to calibrate before you sit down to memorize some cards. Get a big old burst of oxygen. Literally say in your mind, focus, 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 three, two, one, go, right? Well, why do you think they do that at sports, you know? They, they're all the runners are lined up. They're about to launch. Auf die Plätze fertig los, as they say. On your mark, ready, set, go. So why not do that when you need to focus? Let's say you're going to read a book and you're like, oh man, this book, this chapter, it's heavy. Oh, how am I going to do it? Three, two, one, go. And then you just start to read. 
I think you'll find that you, you, you change your mind, right? And part of this, I always think, is to have a fighter pilot attitude. I learned this from Gary Halbert, amazing writer. This guy, he had such clarity and focus on what it takes to be a top performer. And he was a top performer. And he said one of his secrets was just to have a fighter pilot attitude. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, that sounds like a lot of fantasy, myth, and woo-woo. But there's science on it. Niri Al shares some of that science in Indistractable. Let me tell you, folks, Nietzsche was talking about this over 100 years ago, <laughs> about taking on mental models, selecting the myths that you use in your life. This, is, this goes back even further than that. If, if you don't have mental models, then you're missing out on something. You want to think about this. Now, it matters, though, what mental models that you pick. So if you, you know, pick an impossible mental model, then you're, setting the, you're ch stacking the chips against yourself. So you need to think about what is the thing that works. And you know what? You might make some mistakes in the beginning. So I've done this a lot, or I've just taken mental models that were just not right. But it's better to have taken on the mental models than to take none at all. Because then you'll never know that, oh, that wasn't a very good mental model. Remember this principle. Better to say, oh, well, that didn't work than to say, oh, I wish I would have, right? So give this a try. And it's just a very simple thing. Select a mental model and give it a try for some time and then figure it out. So one of the mental models I'll share with you uh, that I took on for some time, and it's not a right or wrong thing. It's just an experiment. Everything's an experiment, which is just Poseidon, right? And thinking about how, what if you had the ability to calm the seas, right? And bam, focus on that. So all my mind is just in a roar, noise, 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 noise. Breathe in, three, two, one, Poseidon, and control the world of all the mind and all that sort of stuff. Really simple. And uh, then I thought, well, yeah, I don't, I don't quite like that metaphor anymore. So we go on to the next one, right? And just keep exploring. So it's a very, very cool thing. You can do it without any sort of mental model also, but just saying, you know, on your place, ready, set, go. That is itself a mental model in a way. It's not such a mythological reference, but it's a, it's a good one. You could have the coach with the gun. Three, two, one, boom, that sort of thing. Starter pistol. All right, so here's another breathing thing that you can do. Three, five, seven. The numbers are arbitrary, but one thing you can do to really help um, yourself focus is breathe in for three, hold for five, exhale for seven. So. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And obviously I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but you could be sitting at a desk. No one needs to know. You're just. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it just helps get your focus going, right? Uh, there's, it's also called box breathing. There's different names for it. Does it have to be three, five, seven? I don't know. I just put those numbers there. It could be five, three, two, five, three, eight, whatever. There's different numbers. You'll see that all over the internet, but it's very, very centering and focusing and it can get you going very, very quickly. Then there's alternate nostril breathing. So this is just imagining that you're breathing in through one nostril. You can literally, you know, go like that, or you can just imagine that you're doing it. I really like to do that. Then there's just full on breath withholding. So we're not going to talk about it, but if you get into it, look up Wim Hof, go see a doctor first. Uh, there's, there's a lot of in, ins and outs about it, but um, I've done a lot of work with this and I think it's been hugely beneficial. Oh yes, indeed it has. <laughs> All right. So AG says, I do well when I'm home with my 90 day goals, but when I visit my girlfriend or stay over a friend's, my habits go out the door. What can I do to stay on track consistently? Oh, that's a great question. So the first thing that I would do is I would get out my journal and I would write down the question, why do my habits go out the door when I visit a friend or my girlfriend? And try to find at least five answers to that question. Why, 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 and why? This is really, really important to do because I don't have the answer, you do, right? And you need to know why those things are happening and you need to have insight based on the experience. So 
if I go and uh, I think of the early days when I was giving up drinking and it'd be, you know, why did I continue to drink even though I made the commitment to not drink? And if I write down and I did do this, well, it's because I have a girlfriend who still drinks. Uh, it's because I still go to bars. <laughs> it's because this, that, and the other thing. And then all the clues are right there on what what's causing the issue. And then you look in the mirror to each and every one and say, what can I do differently? So if the answer is don't go to bars anymore, then don't go to bars anymore. Uh, if the answer is don't have a girlfriend who drinks, well, that can, that can break your heart in two, but it works. And, uh, takes a little bit of self-belief. Anyway, time for that story a different day, but it's it's just that simple. You've got to do some analysis. So the number one thing that I would do to help you stay on track consistently is figure out what it is about your friend's house and your girlfriend's house that is knocking it off and then look in the mirror and then figure out what are the five things that need to change here and then start putting those changes into place and uh, get out of the comfort zone because if you don't make those changes, then things will just repeat. And then you could think, well, what are the strategies, etc.? And you have the answer. So this is partly, you know, the Feynman technique that we're talking about right now. Uh, you could look up more about the Feynman technique, but self-inquiry is a huge, huge thing. We'll talk a little bit more about self-inquiry. Um, Chris says, Wim Hof just had a video with Russell Brand that was fun to watch. And Tim says, Wim is amazing. I highly recommend, yes. Wim Hof is amazing and you know I have the sea doctor first there uh, uh, for a reason but also the other thing too is like if you get into the Wim Hof Facebook group and so forth take care and caution because some people are a little bit over the top with all this stuff and um, you don't necessarily I, I have not found the need to go and take certain risks that I see a lot of people in those groups taking and still get great benefits uh, you can do Wim Hof light so to speak <laughs> All right, uh, so I hope that helps answer your question, AG. Let me know if there's any more um, things around that. But uh, journal, and journal with targeted questions and be willing to be honest. And the other thing I would say, AG, is be willing to test your own answers, right? Because sometimes we lie to ourselves and we won't say the truth. We won't be direct. We, we got to filter our own BS. So, you know, test. Try it a couple times, maybe five times go through it and really force yourself to look at your answers and just have one question in mind. Is this true? Is this true? Is this true? Right? Um, and I think you'll find that very, very powerful. All right. Um, Chris says, for self-inquiry, check out lectures by Swami Sarvaprayananda. Indeed, indeed. I'm not sure I know that one, but um, sounds like something to look through. All right. Okay. So that's, uh, we're going to get into self inquiry a little bit here, um, in a bit, but another thing you can do is the fist clench as an in the moment calibration. So just clenching your fists can help you just focus in the moment, right? So when you need to get back into focus, you notice that you're not focusing, just grab your body and focus, right? And you can say, focus. It's kind of, you know, something to explore. But one thing that I notice about it is that when you really clench them, you have an after effect. You really feel that physical sensation of having clenched for quite some time and it stays with you and it keeps you focused back on your body. You can do a full body clench, right? Just tighten up all your muscles. Nobody has to know you're sitting at your desk going through all this. I've done this many, many times. No one ever notices. No one ever notices. Now, you can also try what I think of as the minimum sip. So if you lose focus and you want to calibrate yourself back to focus, just take a little sip, just the very minimum, and then just hold the water in your mouth and pay attention to that sensation of water. I got that idea from uh, Vladimir Vasiliev who brought Sistema to Toronto from Russia, the Russian martial art. And he talks about, I mean, this is, he's not saying to do it for focus and concentration, but he's saying that people drink too much water a lot of the time. But even just as a focus and concentration exercise, using a straw to take just the bare minimum into your mouth, that's, that's itself a concentration exercise. And then just holding it in your mouth, this small amount, really investigating, exploring the sensation of the water in your mouth, this can bring you back to the present moment, help you focus and concentration. Uh, focus and concentrate. Another thing, Anastasia Wolmer, 
She uh, shared this with me when she was on the podcast recently. Just using the peace sign and the okay sign and then training yourself to switch. <laughs> I'm still not that good at it, but I keep practicing. And it's hard to do when you're talking. That adds an extra level of challenge. But just switching so that one hand does the focus, or sorry, the peace sign and the other goes like this and like that. So those are like little concentration and focus things that you can do just to spend a couple of minutes to calibrate your focus, then get back to work. Uh, you can also do the star trek. So, you know, this hand is going to do this and this hand is going to do that. And then you just switch so that this is so hard to do while you're talking <laughs> so that you go like this and then the other hand. Oh, I can't do it while I'm talking. Did I do it? Yeah, I think I did. Anyway, that's just a little thing. It's just physically calibrating yourself into the present moment. Then you're focused again. Do this a couple of times. So these are basically essentially the same exercise, different variations. Then you can do Kirtan Kriya. Now, silently, you don't want to be disturbing other people. You just, in your mind, just go Sata Nama or Ame Tofu or one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, etc. And uh, this can really help. You can do skipping. So it's like instead of Sata Nama, you can go Sa, Na, Ta, Ma. Woo that's so good. Um, you can do forward and backwards too. So uh, let me see if I can do this while talking. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I don't know. But one is going forward and one is going backwards. I don't know if I'm doing it. I have to kind of not talk to. No, I can't really do it right now. But um, it's a great thing, forward and backwards. Lots of little things you can do. And you can do it silently in your mind. You can do it out loud. Um, I often do this while I'm walking. Very good. Uh, but if you need to focus and concentrate, like for example, sometimes I'll be in a conversation and I'll just notice, I'll just, you know, have my hands and I'll just touch on my legs and uh, bring back my concentration and focus that way. The other thing is having um, affirmations and mantras. So it really matters what the affirmation is. It matters how that they're formulated and framed. They often say that the affirmation should be in the present tense. Uh, I don't know what research there is around that to confirm it, but it just makes logical sense, right? Uh, that if you're putting it in the past tense, <clears throat> that's not going to be as effective as in the present tense because you want to affirm what's happening now and not in the future either, but what's happening now so that when you, you know, hypnotize yourself, so to speak, you're actually having had the benefit of focusing on it in the now. So when you do it again later, it's in the now. Anyway, there's um, contested research around the value of all this sort of stuff. I think that it's good that it's contested, but we also want to focus on ourselves as scientists. Be the scientist in your own life. And you know, it doesn't have to be fancy mantras, just simple things like anthem theme rock songs. So I often think, you know, it's my life or whatever that song is by Bon Jovi. It's my life, it's now or never, right? Because I ain't going to live forever. This is just Nietzsche in a song, right? What does Nietzsche say? Yes to life, right now. Uh, it's in a Bon Jovi song. Uh, Kiss, they covered a song, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, right? Uh, it's never too late to work nine to five. Beautiful things to just have in your mind. Reminders to focus, to concentrate. And if you have them on a playlist, you can go to the playlist. Boom, just put that music on and refocus. And the playlist that has these anthem rock theme songs or whatever it is with these positive messages that remind you to focus and they have this sort of work message. Yeah, it's a bit cliche. It's never too late to work nine to five. But cliche, well, Gilles Deleuze, the French philosopher, he said the war against cliche is a terrible thing. Now, why would he say something like that? Well, it's because usually when people whine and cry and moan about cliches, it's because they're <laughs> they have a little bit of that Freudian hatred of the truth, right? Uh, you 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 can find so much truth in cliche, and it is true that it's never too late to work nine to five. It is true that it is your life, and so by having those things internalized, having them prepared in advance, hey, I'm not feeling particularly focused right now, but I remember my playlist. You might not be able to listen to music at that moment. I remember that I've got this playlist. First song, Bon Jovi, It's My Life. Second song, God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Third song, etc. Boom, boom, boom. This can help reassert this. And if you can listen to it, all the better. But you got to have, you got to be prepared. So for this in the moment calibration, take some prep, do some prep, do it, do it now. And if you have any songs to share, what would be on your 
theme song. It doesn't have to be anthem rock, but let us know. Maybe we can uh, get some songs. I've mentioned a couple of mine. Uh, put them there. And they, they can be weird, oddball things. They don't have to have specific uh, things. I have to edit my, um, my playlist because there's been some uh, changes <laughs> to, the, to the world and some of the people uh, on there no longer represent what they used to represent to me. But um, editing, it was James Clear who said recently that uh, it's not the uh, uh, unexamined life is not worth living, as Socrates would have it, but the unedited life is not worth living. So that's another thing for you is <laughs> edit your life frequently. All right, self-inquiry, we were going to talk about that. So Chris gave a, a thing to follow up on there. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, self-inquiry is a big topic, but one of the biggest things that can help you focus is you find yourself out of focus, you can just simply ask, who is it that's out of focus? Where is this person? Who is the self that thinks it's out of focus, right? And if you train yourself, I mean, I know it sounds weird, but if you just train yourself to start doing this, who is it the person? Who is, who is it that feels out of focus right now? And you look around, you can't find that person. It can really help you realize the nature of focus, the nature of distraction, because you're trying to find that person you think exists to be focused in the first place. Now, I know that's a little bit, you know, conceptual and philosophical and so forth. Far finer uh, neuroscientists or scientists, period, than myself teach this. If you want a structured program in what is essentially self-inquiry, get the Waking Up app and start to follow it because it is constantly urging you to ask these sorts of questions about the nature of experience and who exactly you think it is that's having the experience in the first place. If you can find that person, let me know. I haven't found the person who's having my experience yet. I find different things. Anyway, self-inquiry is a very, very big topic, but that's part of it. It's just, to whom is this experience happening? Who is it that's out of focus right now? And then see if you can find that person. Uh, another way of framing the question would be, um, how is it that I have come to be in this position of being out of focus? Uh, you can just go through the big things, the who, what, where, when, why, and etc. When is this happening, right? And this can just lock your focus back onto the present moment because then you think about the now, you can track back, where, where did this start to fall off focus? Do a bit of journaling around it. And so any sort of self-inquiry on the who, what, where, when, why, and how kind of stuff can really help you get back into the moment, get back into focus. Then maybe you go into your little creativity exercise, memorize a couple of cards, and away you go. You're back at it. You're focused again. All right, so that's part two of today's thing. Let's talk about maintaining all of this over the long haul because we don't want to just, you know, get a couple of days out of this. We want to make sure that this lasts. So one of the number one things you can do is understand free. In order to be set free from distraction, you're going to need to use the free model. What is the free model? It's frequent practice. Wow. Mind blown, right? Everybody knows you have to practice things frequently, but do you, right? Well, one of the ways to make sure that you do is to commit to 90 days to one or two or three things uh, max and then really practice them. Put it out on a calendar. Make the commitment. It, look, there's no, there's no magic bullet way to do this here. You have to want to at some level, and then you have to sit down. You have to plan. You have to structure it. You have to figure something out. And one of the, the tools that I think is well worth investing in in order to make sure that you can is the Freedom Journal. It's 100 days, not 90, but it'll help, you know, have it. It's, I think uh, when John Lee Dumas put it together, he was quite smart to make it look like a Bible. Gold, so it's important. I don't know if you can see that gold there, but um, really help you out to focus. And, and the Mastery Journal is, is part two, the second installment. This can help you have multiple missions on the same day and just commit. Get it out in writing. Get it a big brick in front of your face so that you can practice frequently. Because if you're not going to do it frequently, you're out, of, you're out of luck. It's just it's not going to build the neurochemical garden that's needed. The dopamine, the myelin, etc. All these things that are involved in habit formation. Again, if you want some science around that, read James Clear's Atomic Habits 
read Daniel Coyle's The Tan Talent Code, um, read Richard Weissman, 59 Seconds. It's all there. It's, it's This is nothing to have an opinion about. The science has, has figured it out 100%. Now, in terms of the R in free, we need to be relaxed. Relax and practice relaxation so that you love to practice frequently, right? And then make sure that you do it all in a spirit of experimentation. Experimentation is really important because you don't want to start to have attitudes and opinions and ideas about stuff that are not helpful, not useful. So, oh, it didn't work. I'm frustrated. I hate this. The world sucks, etc. That, that That's not a spirit of experimentation. Spirit of experimentation says, oh, that's curious. I'm frustrated. Why? And uh, how can I now track back, do some exercises, journal it all out, and figure out how not to be having this emotional reaction. And the same thing goes with success. You know, pat yourself on the back. Wow, I'm so amazing. Yay, you should do that. But then stop and say, well, why is this working? Why am I getting these great results? Journal, reflect. It's all an experiment. And then make sure you're entertained, right? When you're prepared, you'll be entertained endlessly, endlessly. So you memorize those little mantras and those lyrics so that you're prepared. And then you just have stuff to go through in your mind. And then you'll find it more entertaining. You, you, when you prepare with your song list there, you'll be much more entertained because you'll have that sort of stuff. Make hay while the sun shines. Do it now. Don't wait. Order something like this. Somebody, This is the speed of implementation rule. Someone says, hey, you should work with this for 90 days. Go out and order one immediately because every minute that goes by, you're exponentially stacking the chips against yourself for not doing it at all. And this is what ultimately you need to do in order to maintain. You have to commit to the fact that this is a neurochemical game. Everything in success comes from you looking at the present portrait, saying this is the status quo, being radically honest about what it is and why you think it is that way, and then commit to being smarter, serious, mature, and ready to embrace reality, right? And that means this is the status quo, these are the things that work. This is obviously got to apply to me. There's nothing special about this neurochemical bath except for the fact that it's mine. And I have to accord with reality, figure out the path according to what all the top performers do, buckle up, buckle down, and get ready to rock because that's the most exciting thing. How do you do it? Well, you can visualize it all with journaling. And again, these are these are great journaling tools, Mastery Journal, Freedom Journal, etc. If you want, you know, some more stuff, the Cosmic Journal. This is great. I don't um, get all these things because it's a fantasy. It's because I, I want to actually benefit from the actual engagement. So I get tools that remove a lot of the thinking. Don't don't rebuild the wheel. Just hey, every day you go into this and you do a journaling exercise. Bang, you follow a program. And then you get great results. It's that simple. And why I say visualize with journaling is because you see the product in front of you so that you're not juggling things around in your mind all the time. You reduce the cognitive load of mental visualization, mental future casting, mental planning, and then you have it on paper. And then you can move things around. You can do multiple drafts. You have strategies and techniques that are in front of you rather than burdening your mind with it. Burdening your mind can lead to different effects, the Tsigarnik effect, for example. Um, but you have to also be careful that you don't burden yourself with a bunch of to-do lists, which can lead to more Tsigarnik effect. Tsigarnik effect is you know, the notion that the more undone things you have on your to-do list, the more they appear in your consciousness. That's why the Not Now folder can be very, very useful that we talked about earlier today to help reduce the Tsigarnik effect. And especially if you segment it in a way that your not now folder also has a segment, which is the not ever folder. And just allow yourself to decide, yes, that was a thing I wanted to do. I moved it to the not now segment of the folder. Now I'm moving it to the not ever folder because it's just not going to get done. And then Tsigarnik effect whoo, disappears. Externalize is what I'm saying. There's a huge movement out there right now for minimalism, not having all kinds of uh, objects, etc. And I, I'm into that. I've done minimalism. I've gotten all my belongings down to a backpack, a bass guitar, and my 
emergency suitcase, as I always, uh, or my my emergency case, uh, which is emergency paycheck. That's what I always call it, uh, which is my magic kit. So I can go out and do magic tricks, obviously, uh, <laughs> during a time like this where we need to keep our distance from people. It's not exactly the emergency paycheck that I would have imagined that it could be through anything. But of course, we um, are not there yet. Uh, and we could always do magic through the internet, I guess, if needed to. But the point being is um, you want to be prepared. You want to make sure that you have a, a, a life towards having all the things ready to go and visualize it so you're not juggling it in your mind. Because if you juggle things in your mind, you, you, you're going to end up suffering and having too much cognitive overwhelm. Joseph is in the house. Good to see you, Joseph. I don't know if I'm a pastor. I hope not. But um, <laughs> thank you. I will take it as a compliment all the same. We are here to preach the good news of memory, but that does, that does not a pastor make. Um, let's see here. The other thing that I would suggest that you do is invest in accountability. So people should make sure that they're getting coached. Uh, coaching is not for everybody, and it, you don't need to necessarily have an in-person coach, but some sort of continuity, there's a number of ways to, th to think about it. It can be now there's so many online programs where you can be in groups, etc. But make sure that you know what accountability style that you have and make sure you're getting it. Accountability to yourself. I'm pretty good with the accountability to myself stuff, but accountability to others with care, making sure that it's right for you, the timing is right, and then accountability to maybe a coach or to a group, etc. Um, another maintenance thing is just to kill the newsfeed. And I mean, literally the Chrome extension for Facebook, but also just be careful about the news. Make sure you're getting news from good sources. Make sure you're reading both sides of the aisle. Make sure that you have it timed so that you're not just being bombarded by news randomly, but that you're taking in the news at a strategic moment where you can reflect on it, you can journal about it, you can, you know, think it through, have some time to reflect so that it's not a feed at all, right? This whole thing, well, my feed. When, when did we become cattle? Cattle of information. Blah, blah, blah. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. This is nonsense. Kill that stuff. Have structure of intake. Take in your stuff on a regular pattern. Uh, reading happens at intervals that are planned and thought about when's going to be the best time and then show up consistently and don't have it disrupted by this constant feed. Oh, you know, th this is just turning yourself into a cow. If you're going to be a cow, be a cow that you know how to milk yourself or have others milk you of value so that good stuff is coming out, not the cow that's being fattened for the slaughter. All right. Now, another thing you want to do is build inspiration into your life and internalize it through memorization. And one of the number one things that you can do is make sure that you have a good memorization program. So uh, I don't know what that's going to be for you, but it can be that you are memorizing something from knowledge that you want to, to learn, dates or something for a language, something that means something to you that's going to improve your life. And then, you know, focus on inspiring things, inspiring lyrics, etc. And we'll soon have uh, something about memorizing songs coming out in a formal way on the blog and the podcast soon. Um, some questions that people have asked a lot. How do you regain focus after an interruption? Well, as I said today, be prepared with like a deck of cards or something like that to have a quick creativity exercise. Maybe doodle a little bit, mind map a little bit, and um, have a strategy in advance is basically the idea so that you can focus when you get uh, interrupted. Another thing to do is, let's say you wind up with a bunch of tabs, just drag that tab out so that you have only one tab. There's nothing wrong with having multiple tabs, but what about having all those multiple tabs on different windows. And then when you find, oh, I've got a bunch of multiple tabs, just drag out the one, work on the one until it's done. This can be a wonderful little strategy to help you regain focus because now you've just got the one open. Now, people also, you know, essentially can use the idea 
that we've talked about many times before that Nier talks about in Indistractable that Nietzsche talked about forever ago is to have a mental model. And one of the mental models that you can adopt is being the chess master. So, you know, how can you organize your life so that you just simply aren't interrupted in the first place? This is the ultimate answer to the question. Nobody can do it for you. You gotta sit down and journal. It's like, I am easily distracted. How can I make it that I'm not? So be the chess master who's thinking five pieces ahead. Well, I know that this interrupts me, so now how can I make sure that it doesn't? And think ahead, 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 ahead. And the five times rule is very, very simple. So we, we answered a uh, question for AG about that that basically went into it, you know? Ask all these different questions, find out multiple solutions, triangulate different possible outcomes, and build strategies for those. Um, one of the biggest ones is to mentally revisit that vision. And one of the things that I've done is mind mapped my vision and just had it. When I work on a project, I have the mind map right here in front of me and the mind map doesn't leave until the project is done. I force myself to have it on the desk and the mind map is the vision for the project. So mind mapping, getting it physical, big, colorful, multiple colors, multiple pieces, multiple parts, everything that needs to be built for a particular thing right there in front of you, big, so that you are indistractable, as Nier says. And... Um, it's very interesting that in Indistractable, he has this pullout <laughs> that you can use there to uh, have a physical thing that shows others that you're indistractable, but you can use the mind map right in your environment to remind you that you should be indistractable from this thing. And I find it very useful. I see this thing every day. Oh, I've got this major thing. When I wanted to finish brain exercises boot camp, or brain exercise boot camp, just having it there every day made sure I didn't forget about it. Now it's done and people can enjoy. So that's a, something to consider. Um, also, all the physical recalibration things that we talked about is very, very important. Now, some people are asking a lot about um, focus and quotes. What quotes would you <laughs> recommend? Well, I don't know if I would be the person to recommend quotes, but one that comes to mind is Volcanic Island quote that I like. And um, basically, you kind of need to know the, the source, you know, Every man is an island unto himself or whatever. Because um, Wyndham Lewis, he once in one of his adventures referred to that quote and he said, if you have to be an island, you might as well be a volcanic island. <laughs> and I've always loved that one, which is basically like the fighter pilot attitude thing. So that's pretty cool. And um, it's basically just saying, you know, live your life in the most explosive way so that you're just switched on, figure out how to be switched on, figure out how to be blissful, figure out how to be your best possible self and then refigure it out again and show up and practice the practice and, you know, bubble and every day so that you're just at the top of the game. Another quote that comes to mind is not really a quote at all, but just the acronym focus, follow one course until successful. Now we've talked about interleaving and having other things, but I, th I think all of those things when I suggest having multiple topics that you work on, they still fall under an umbrella of the one topic. And completing courses is really, really important. Uh, I, I, I'm so, you know, I'm just as much as anybody else distracted by things. I'm very sad that my Chinese level four course was canceled, but we all know why these things have been canceled recently. And um, so it goes, right? But uh, one of the reasons why I take the actual courses is not because necessarily I couldn't, couldn't, you know, do it, do the same stuff all on my own, but just simply because it is a course that can be followed. And then you make a good friendship with the teacher. You get on the, all these knock on effects, such as a schedule, such as a syllabus, you have something to follow. And one of the things we have in the internet, that's just a little bit um, frustrating is, is so much self-study, which is good, but how do you, how do you, move yourself forward? How do you follow one course so that you can be successful? Uh, and the answers are accountability, essentially. Find out your account accountability needs and then make sure that you invest in what's going to make that happen for you. And sometimes price is the thing that will make that happen. Sometimes uh, there are other things. But work on that and just know that fo focus can mean following one course until successful, even if it means multiple courses, right? 
And then the other one is Bruce Lee, of course. The successful warrior is the average man with laser-like focus. So I love that one. And, it, and it's an important one because it reminds us that there are no people who are extraordinary. There's no person on earth who's accomplished many things that has a brain that is radically different than yours. There's no genetic advantage, really. There might be some here, there, and the other place, but really, what is it that, that makes the difference? It's strategy and follow-through and consistency and having a vision. It's just a very, very simple thing that I, I don't really see any outliers. You see the, the odd you know, sort of crazy thing that happens. But then how do they wind up maintaining that success? So you take Zuckerberg or something like that, right? Well, who knew? Maybe, maybe who knew that this was going to explode to be the big thing that it was? Well, it may have all the hallmarks of an outlier, unexpected sort of success. But what it also has is one of the first thing that comes in to make it grow, to maintain it, etc., is a vision statement and then some sort of consistent program of working on core metrics, etc. So everything's just average, right? Even the unexpected outlier success then still has the average brain behind it and it has to show up to the common structural things that everybody else has to do in order to maintain that success. Otherwise, it's a blip. It disappears. So you could take MySpace as an example that didn't follow all of those things, didn't understand the role of key metrics and became a ghost town, right? So um, Chris is asking about my suggested source for mind maps. Give me a second and I will show you. I've got it here uh, in, a, in a row, ready to go. So I would recommend Mind Map Mastery by Tony Buzan. And um, this is a really good one because it has the 10 laws of mind mapping. And it's got a number of uh, colorful examples inside. Unfortunately, uh, we can't study mind mapping with Buzan in person anymore. I was fortunate to be able to do it. We mind mapped what I'm doing with the magnetic memory method, uh, and it was just incredible to, to have him there. I'm going to get emotional. But uh, in any case, that's what I would recommend. Uh, Barbara says, I would like to know the recommended mind map tutorial as well. This is what I would recommend. 2018, it came out, Mind Map Mastery. It's it's the, the culmination, and um, uh, it really just boils everything down into a compact source. It's a very beautiful book. And you know what? Here's the thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest to you. Just try it for 90 days following the 10 laws. I've thought of myself, well, why this? Why that? And I just sort of said, Whoosh. and then I discovered a certain logic to it and I might be inventing certain <laughs> reasons why that it should be that way and not others, but I actually think that it makes sense. So one of them, for example, is the idea that every mind map should have three colors minimum, right? And I just thought, this is the most ridiculous idea ever. Why should I follow this? But I did, and I, I, as I thought about it, cross-indexed it with other things that I know, uh, such as diffuse thinking, Really, when you're reaching for that other color, you are percolating differently. Your mind takes stress off the one thing that it's doing, and it goes on to the other. So, and he doesn't, I don't remember him saying anything like that ever in any of his books, but I always just thought, why bother? Why can't it just be one color? But I can tell you, when I started to mind map with three colors, they got a lot better. The out outcomes from them got a lot better. And I'm pretty sure that the three color rule, even if he didn't, clarify it scientifically, and even if there isn't any one-to-one -one correspondence studies, it sure matches on to other studies that are suggestive of interleaving, essentially, or taking your focus off something so diffuse thinking can occur and percolate around. Anyway, I found a huge benefit from it, and so I would just say, just try it. Maybe your answers will, won't make sense. Maybe some of them don't make sense at all, but there's 10 laws there in total. And I found them very, very useful to practice. And I spent years mind mapping, ignoring most of them. Then I finally went and trained with the guy himself. Then we mind mapped the Magnetic Mary Method work together. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to try this. And I just stuck with it. And I've always mind mapped with the laws ever since. And I uh, was so delighted when this came out because it codifies them in the full culmination of things. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I would recommend. Now... Uh, Chris is saying, is he the guy claiming to have coined the term? Chris, I don't know the full story. 
there were some, I don't know that he claimed to coin it, and maybe he did, but uh, there were some things, I believe, in the 80s where they tried to trademark it. And whether there's a right or wrong or a good or a bad behind that, I'm not going to judge. Uh, I could go on and, and say both pros and cons and and some things and quibble over the uh, foolhardy nature of all that. Uh, I would just point to one thing, which is that there there was in the in the Buzan world a a concentration on competitiveness, hence the creation of the World Memory Championships, and so that may be the reason why there was an effort to trademark the term mind mapping for exclusive use by that thing and um, humans. <laughs> that would be you know the thing that I would say. I don't know the full story. Um, but it is interesting, and it is uh, something to to sort of consider. But one of the things that's, that's good about this book is its careful consideration of the alternatives in terms of fishbone diagrams and starburst diagrams and all that stuff. And it, I think it does a good job of making the argument for why this as an alternative to that, because there are all these other things. And when Buzan talks about radiant thinking and the the uh, the way that on paper you could potentially reproduce the functioning of a cell and externalize thought and so forth, personally, I don't think he's far off the mark from what we see in a lot of good science on creativity, a lot of good science we see on what thinking is, etc. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we all know that there's a room for criticizing things. There's a there's certainly foibles that people have made <laughs> in their career. I think the competitive nature of things is just what appeared in that individual. You mentioned a source on self-inquiry, so I think we could apply self-inquiry tools <laughs> to, to any uh, judgments our minds might make about whatever was done there. Uh, and certainly people do make judgments about what was done there. <laughs> and uh, we could just then ask with self-inquiry, to whom is any of those conclusions even remotely interesting or useful? Uh, and the answer might be a useful one, um, but the answer might also just disappear as we find that there's nobody there to ask. <laughs> anyway, Mind Map Mastery is one of my favorite books of all time, even though it's only been out since 2018. It's done a lot of good, and of course, a lot of it just codified what I learned in person, but um, I'm so glad to have it as a resource. And... I was delighted when it came out and I rushed to order it. And um, yeah, I was, I, it's, it's very cool to have known him uh, personally and he was a great mentor. All right, so another question that comes up commonly is how do you last for eight hours? Well, do we recommend lasting for eight hours? I don't know. But one strategy is in uh, Alex Pang's book, Rest, and it is essentially interleaving again. So. One of the things you can do is in order to keep going and take a rest is just to change what you're doing. So I like to write and then I don't feel like stopping writing, but to take a break anyway and refresh, just go and write something else, something creative, something that has no need for an outcome, etc. So you can try that unconventional uh, breaks or, you know, you can, if you have to do a lot of reading, you can read on a book in a reading spot, sat in a mobile way and then you or an immobile way and then you can put on an audiobook from a different topic and go for a walk and continue reading while you're there and that is borne out with some research that is in rest um the other thing is to just experiment with today's techniques and continue your research on focus so i've talked about indistractable a lot today that's what it looks like without the green screen uh, actually that's quite a different uh, cover than this one this one's not blue but uh, I, re I recommend that. Uh, another book that I think you'll find really interesting and I would recommend that you check out is called Peak Performance. It's a little bit uh, newer than, um, than Miyu, Cheek Sent Miyu's um, focus book. And it's got uh, some leadership ideas. That's what it looks like when it's not all shiny on the, uh, on the green screen background here. Oh, that shows up pretty good. But uh, I quite like this book a lot and uh, would recommend it to you. Incidentally, to mine, oh, 
yeah, this one was sent to me for review purposes, but usually these books I recommend are not sent to me for review purposes. So Mind Map Mastery, I, I just got. But this one was, actually. But I'm glad, uh, because uh, Nir was really good to talk to on the podcast. But usually my, my book uh, recommendations are, are, are just my own stuff, including this one, which is Stretch, which I would also recommend to you for more focus on work at home stuff. Um, so check those books out as recommendations. And uh, yeah, I would again encourage you, if you haven't listened to it yet, listen to the podcast with Boris Conrad. It is the most recent one, but I'm not just mentioning it because it's the most recent one, which I know I often do, but I'm also mentioning it because I asked him about focusing on work and his major accomplishments in a multiple number of fields, including neuroscience. He's an incredible speaker. He's won awards for speaking, and he's also uh, you know, a memory competitor and a neuroscientist. So you might want to think about how you can focus more by listening to some of his stuff. And I ask him at the end of that interview to please uh, dive deeper into some of his strategies and best suggestions. All right, everybody. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's session. I'm going to uh, assail you with a bunch of other links and recommendations. So if you got to leave, that's a-okay with me. Uh, I appreciate you for being here. But if you want to ask any questions, now is your chance as we go into the end of the session and um, <laughs> the, the link chess begins. So in case you haven't been checking out this series, I am going to shamelessly plug the Art of Memory series. And I highly recommend starting at the beginning and then going immediately to part two to Rhetorica Ad Herinium. If you haven't pre-ordered Victorious Mind, please do so. Send in your receipt. I've got a very special free course for you called How to Stop Thinking. That's at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash VM. Thank you so much, Chris, for being here. Thank you, Barbara, for joining us. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you for being here, Tim. And I want to thank all the channel members who have started supporting this channel with their memberships by clicking that join button down below. It's been a wonderful honor and uh, we got eight. We're hoping to grow to 800 at least. And um, yeah, just imagine the things that we could accomplish for this community with, uh, with that power of people joining us. All right, everybody. Thank you again for being here with us today and We'll see you the next time. Uh, you can always let me know what you might like to see featured on a future program. And I hope that you're doing okay focusing on your work at home if you're working at home. And if you're working at work, these tricks should serve you well as well. Of course, they're not really tricks. They're a call to focus on the foundations, to make sure that you have the foundation so that those little tricks and tips actually have a place to land. Always remember, start with the foundations and then add the tricks and the variations and the tips and all that sort of stuff. And that'll serve you well for life, whatever it is you are called to do as the architect of your dreams and your fantasies. All right, everybody, thank you again. Until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Bye-bye.